Hello and welcome to part three of Deathbird Stories. Here we're going to be looking at, well, some of the weirder stories in the book, if that's even possible in the world of Harlan Ellison. These are hit and miss for some, and one or two of them you may not even be swinging at a, with a bat, and uh, some of them you won't, won't even be standing in the batter's box. It gets really weird from here on out. So the first one we've got is called The Face of Helen Bourneau. It's made into uh, Showtime's The Hunger TV series, and uh, Harlan was part of that, and he ended up using his pseudonym Cordwainer Bird, and he uses this term whenever a creative direction of his is not heard or not listened to, an executive gets in his way, a director doesn't care what he has to say. Anytime his creative spirit has been mangled, he uses this pseudonym. So obviously, he didn't like what happened to it. I haven't watched it. I don't know how it is in relation to the actual story. So I don't know how different it is. But this is a story of a very attractive woman who goes about, I guess, sowing the seeds of misery by indulging men in their fantasies. It's a, it's a pretty compelling story on its subjective matter alone, but it's also what some might call purple or purpley or purple prose it's that this is a term for when you describe stories or writing styles that are very ornate or very elaborate or very wordy in most cases that's kind of the point of short stories by definition and harlan ellison is one of the best short story writers out there so it could be hit or miss for some people but here ellison definitely plays with the theme of the supernatural or the fantastical uh causing these events to happen even if they have a, a female creature to conduct these deeds. It's very adult, it's disgusting at times, and that's kind of what Harlan is really good at. He pushes the envelope and he does it with style. So, the second story is called Bleeding Stones. Now, this is where I would say we get a misstep out of all the stories. Even fans of Harlan Ellison, guys who just love all his work, do not get it. And I kind of think that's the point. At least I hope that's the point. And there's really nothing to get, and there's really not much to even call this a story. I mean, things happen, but there's no beginning, there's no real end. It's just sort of, to put it bluntly, it's literally about a bunch of gargoyles coming to life and just slaughtering everyone in a city. Uh, it's just a giant gore fest of gargoyles tearing people of all denominations apart. It's, I mean, it's very good diction. It's very good grammar. There's good spelling. But you're going to be either completely confused, repulsed, uh, or maybe you'll just see it as a farce. It's hard to say. As all his depictions of blood and gore are just repeated over and over and over. The same thing happens. The, the gargoyle comes to life, comes down, and tears these people apart. Gargoyle, gargoyle comes to life, comes down, tears people apart. This, this is how the whole entire story goes. And the closest thing I can get to meaning in all this is most of the people who are killed are either religious or people who have caused some degree of pollution. So maybe pol pollution and religion is bad? It's, it's hard to say. The third story is called At the Mouse Circus. Now, this is a story that is very hard to get. And every time you read it, if you do read it multiple times, you might see some semblance of meaning, and then sometimes you'll see nothing. It's kind of like a James Joycean Finnegan's Wake kind of vibe. Not as crazy, not as wild, which is good, but it's really not that far removed from that kind of experience. All of that is bad in my book. Uh, Finnegan's Wake is just a ridiculous thing to read. So everything is sort of crazy. It's kind of like this drug-filled comical dream. The settings, you have the characters, you have locations, everything is almost up in the air. You're not quite sure what's going on. You're not quite sure where you are, what's happening. And we don't know if the main character is the king of Tibet. You don't know if he's the narrator. And it's just bizarre. Like you're not sure if the narrator is to be believed. And that's really bad. There's a reference even to Billy Batson in the Shazam comic or Shazam which is kind of uh, interesting. It goes to show a Harlan's love of, of comic books there. 
So each of these stories has a little intro blurb before you get into the actual story. It's kind of like a little uh, message from Harlan, just for a moment. Just get into his mind just for that one moment. And in this one, it reads, This is what happens when a black man worships a white god. And I don't know exactly what what that works out in this story, how that connects. Um, the main character's name is the King of Tibet, but he's also called Charles. It's We're not too sure who's who and what's what. You know, in creative writing class, I remember studying, we had this one Russian guy who would always reply whenever he read any other student's story as, A, I didn't get it, or B, I thought the other guy was on drugs, like the main character. And in this case, in this story, that would be true in both scenarios. You're never quite sure what's going on. It is so surreal and has some some minor relation to the previous story, Corpse, that a car is being cannibalized, but in a much, much more literal way. Like the descriptions literally describe it as such. And I don't think it plays with the theme of gods and belief very much, but it's so hard to grasp and wrap your head around. It's one of those things you keep, like, what what was he on? What was he thinking when he wrote? It's one of those stories. And it's so joycey and you have to, like, just, Stop thinking about it and then come back to it years later. All right. The next one is A Place With No Name. This is actually quite interesting. I really like this one. Um, The first half of the story is like a a world of normalcy. And the latter half is just you jump into the crazy, weird, bizarre, magical one. And actually the, the, uh, the intro blurb summarizes it best, suggesting that Christ had a homosexual relationship with Prometheus. How that actually worked out over time and if such beings could exist, uh, what that would mean to someone else, uh, I don't really want to give this story away, but it's pretty interesting what it implies and that the idea of what it means to do something for a higher cause, if you're that kind of person who is who doesn't have the meaning or, or value or happiness in his life, What can they do? And how can they do that? And is it worth it? And we come to the last one. This is also one of, again, we're talking about Harlan Ellison, so almost all of his stories are are fantastic, even his misses. Uh, This one's called Pain God. Um, Yeah, it's probably the best in the book, one of the best. I mean, I have about five or six, which are just excellent. So this is one of them. And for me, this is excellent. It is ornate. It is beautiful, it is science fiction, it's easy to read, easy to comprehend compared to the previous ones. These are, this is like crystal clear. It has an almost Neil Gaiman-esque vibe to it in terms of its scope and scale and its ideas of mythology, even though it's science fiction. It's it's just a greatly written story and you remember it long after you've touched it, um, much the same way you might remember parts of reading Neil Gaiman's Sandman. Which is, again, very funny because the other four stories I just talked about are so weird and so hit and miss. This one is so clear and connects so well. It's so easy to comprehend. You can give it to anyone and they will immediately know what's going on. So clarity is, is one of the, at the forefront of the story. And it's what you need in, in especially Harlan Ellison's stories just because he has so many ideas. He has so much control of the English language. And for him to clarify it this way the idea and the verbosity he uses is just fantastic. And this course is science fiction, so it's a great genre, great short story, and just a great story in general. So thanks for listening. I'll see you next time in part four. Mm-hmm.